Yeah, and so this is it. I mean, this is like one year ago for us. Um, so thank you for being back here for our, um, let's, I don't want to quite call it like post-COVID because I know we're not quite there, but we're almost post-COVID back into the swing of things. Um, you know, our organization started at the end of a pandemic and we're right about there now again as we go into our second century. So we could not have, uh, we would, I know we would not be here if it wasn't for you guys participating, um, showing up, offering to help. Um, so thank you to all of you, because really it would have been a really, really tough year um, for me personally and artistically and here at the Art League. So thank you. Um, and I want to just say a couple things before we go on to what you're really here for. Um, there's over 50 pieces in the show, which I think 45 of them were dropped off at three o'clock on Saturday with one hour to go before drop off closed. So um, Jeff hung this show in about a day and a half. Um, and obviously if you've been in here the last couple of weeks, you know there was a considerable amount of moving and things to do um, with walls and stuff. So uh, we have over 50 pieces. We have seven, um, artists here that have never exhibited before, and that's pretty big, I think, for us, um, for our little small organization. Um, and those seven uh, new artists are also not members, so um, if you know who they are, I'm gonna welcome them. They're gonna, they're gonna be part of our little group here. Um, anyway, so thank you to Jeff for hanging a great show. Um, <laughs> Um, really quickly, there's, only, there's two little things, you know, I am always telling you guys about the stuff we've got planned, but I want to just tell you two of the things that we have coming up. Um, the first one is on the 31st of this month, we have an online um, presentation by the Oak Park History Museum. Um, you can register online, it'll be via Zoom, and it's a, uh, it's titled, um, Jimmy Cricket. Uh, it is titled A Century of Culture, and it's about the history of Oak Park, but it ties into the history of the Art League and what was going on culturally and artistically in the city of Chicago. We have a lot of roots here, people that are here in Oak Park um, and working downtown as well in the city. So tune into that. Um, and then on April 15th, we have the first installment of our professional development series on how to write an artist statement. Um, if you have take any advantage at all of the online presence that we offer to our artist members, and I will include myself in this, having had to write artist statements for myself is really hard. Um, we could all use a tune-up. So the best 15 bucks you'll spend all year. Um, tune into the act, <laughs> participate, and then we're going to be following that up with another presentation in May on how to use social media platforms to grow your artistic, um, your art business. Um, so keep an eye out for that as well. Um, so since none of you came here to listen to me tonight, I'd like to introduce Danny Floyd, who is an artist, a researcher, a curator, and an educator. Uh, he is a lecturer of visual and critical studies at my alma mater at SAIC, and um, he's been awarded the Gaylord and uh, Dorothy Donnelly Foundation Curatorial Fellowship in 2017. Um, he's also judged a number of other shows around the Chicago area um, and has a strong pra artistic practice of his own. So, Thank you. Without further ado. Hi. <laughs> um, it's really great to be here. This is the first time I've talked to a group of people this big that wasn't over Zoom. <laughs> so I feel weird. So if I seem weird, I am weird. So sorry. <laughs> so, sorry. Um, so I, you know, when I, I really enjoyed the show. I really uh, loved coming out here and also like getting familiar with the organization a little bit too. Um, so thank you very much for including me. Um, when I came to see the show, the first thing that came to mind was when I was in college, I saw the filmmaker David Lynch speak and a really funny thing happened. Somebody from the audience just said, I'm never gonna have an opportunity to say this. Could you just explain Blue Velvet to me? That was like, <laughs> it's one of his films. It's really notoriously 
impenetrable. But, uh, and all David Lynch said was, in life there are abstractions. And so I was thinking a lot about how abstractions are part of our daily life. Um, and so when looking at the show, I tried to really gravitate towards that as a kind of continu continuum, as something very distant from representation and also something that kind of brushes up against representation as kind of quintessential to our experience, especially now that our like daily life and like being in front of people and doing like things in meat space has become abstracted. Um, so I selected a few that run that gamut. Um, and so first I want to point to an honorable mention. Um, this by um, Michael Ireland, this blue period. Um, I love how incredibly direct the materiality is um, and yet still rendering something that kind of eludes representation. And yet we still find a three-dimensional aspect to it, um, which we can relate to in real space. Um, so I think that is on that kind of continuum that I was talking about. So I really love this piece. Um, and then we all want to like move a little bit, but not get more than or less than six feet close to each other. Um, I want to point out uh, my third place choice, which is Jill Meyer's uh, Preserve. Um, I I uh, just really love formal aspects of this, there's like quite a lot of joy in looking at the um, at the contrast of light, lights and darks, but also there's this materiality to it that feels representational without conjuring a particular image, and I like the um, mental complexity of trying to navigate that in the brain. Um, so I, I just uh, particularly love this piece. Um, so that is my third place choice. Um, and then over here, so for my second place choice, and this really, I think this one really speaks to the idea of in life there are abstractions. Um, 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 Brian's here. Uh, hi. Um, so the second place, this one. Oh, I'm sorry, and Jill is here too. Oh, Jill's here too. Hi. <laughs> Was Michael here? No, Michael. No, Michael. Okay. Um, nice to meet you both. Um, so yeah, in this piece, I was also thinking about how um, uh, sort of moments of the exterior of exterior life, were and the kind of patterns and shapes that emerge have their own abstract quality. But now that we're even more distanced from them, uh, perhaps they're even more so. Um, and yeah, I love the, the brush handling and the paint handling on a formal level. I, I quite enjoy it. So finally, first place, if we can come over here. Sorry, this is the most I've moved all day. I've been doing so I'm like having fun with it. Um, so Janice Elkins, uh, the losing dice for class. Something about, like, as I moved through the show, I couldn't stop thinking about this painting, there's, um, I like that there's a real um, sparse quality to it, and yet it's very, very worked. Um, and to me, that like puts me in my body, it gives me a very, a very real experience of abstraction. There's also some, something human-like in it that, that I just relate to on a bodily level, even though it doesn't quite land on a specific representation. Um, I like that complicated experience of seeing the piece. So that's what I got. Um, <laughs> and is Janice here? Um, Janice is not here. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if she's going to make it or not. So I think that's it. Um, that's it as far as, unless you have anything else. No, that's all. Just thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.